Good morning, folks. Switcher here. <clears throat> now, what does Switcher have up his sleeve for you today? Well, <clears throat> we don't have a model. Uh, this is part of my uh, book reviews. And today I want to discuss, I received this in the mail area yesterday, how to build dioramas, aircraft, armor, ships, and figure models, so on and so forth, by Shepard Payne. Uh, published by Calm Back Books, K A L M Back Books, ISBN number 0890241953. 3 Now, I don't know who recommended this reference, but, um, um, I acquired it, <laughs> and it was a good reference to acquire. Um, table of contents, okay, uh, uh, in the various chapters, okay, uh, chapter one, uh, ideas and planning, chapter two, from the ground up, chapter three, uh, weathering techniques, chapter four, posing and painting figures, uh, chapter five, the elephant's dilemma, Chapter 6, Details and Accessories. Chapter 7, Super Detailing, Battle Damage and Interiors. Chapter 8, The Lady Be Good. Chapter 9, Structures for Diorama. Chapter 10, Farewell to Bonham Richard. Chapter 11, The Road to Damascus. Chapter 12, Resin Plaster and Other Aftermarket Kits. 13, The Hornet's Nest. 14, Shadow boxes. Fifteen, the meeting of the Admiralty Board. Sixteen, mirrors, force perspective, and other special effects. Seventeen, the gun deck of HMCS Victory. And chapter eighteen, photographing your dioramas. Uh, there are several step-by-step -step, um, how-tos in this particular uh, book. Uh, chapter 5, The Elephant's Dilemma. Uh, chapter 8, Lady Be Good. Chapter 11, The Road to Damascus. 13, The Hornet's Nest. 15, The Admiralty's Board and The Gun Deck of HMCS Victory. And basically these steps-by-steps steps are a uh, compendium, okay, of... Uh, the descriptive nature of the book, and they just show you how these techniques get applied. Uh, very well laid out, nice uh, glossy paper, and uh, I'm going to make sure I'm in shot here. You're not going to get both pages, but anyways, we might uh, zoom out a little bit and see if that's not any, that doesn't make it a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Uh, the introduction, a scene that tells a story, the skills that you need, so on and so forth. Uh, ideas and planning. Okay, uh, some beautiful shots of, uh, in this particular one, uh, the tank of uh, what around uh, a penetration looks like. So on and so forth. Uh, this particular one I want to focus in on, and uh, very important, and it's entitled... Emphasizing the storyline. Um, and this is basically what's going on. It says we have the gunner that's uh, clearing a, uh, a misfire and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, yeah. That's okay. Figure B, they turn around and say, uh, let's show some realism in there, some urgency and so on and so forth. Okay. And C... Uh, we definitely see the urgency in clearing that jam, okay, because he's got a, the driver is down and so on and so forth. They're being fired upon, so it's incumbent. So let your diorama, uh, your diorama tell a story. And um, that is an uh, interesting perspective. And I've uh, seen that and uh, couldn't... Um, I didn't know the uh, there was uh, books to actually do that. Uh, we go into displaying planes, okay, various armor, uh, 
balance, the difference between balance and symmetry, okay, how to balance your project, and uh, there's a lot of Fibonacci secrets, and I'm going to show you a prime example of that where they show you the golden mean. Uh, various things, okay, for example, uh, nope, and uh, throughout, okay, uh, building complex uh, buildings and so on and so forth, um, the position of the troops, um, they have to be realistic, they have to tell a story, okay, and that's basically what they're telling, uh, from the ground up, uh, here's an example of Fibonacci sequence, I'm going to zoom in on that one, the golden means, <clears throat> And uh, we'll do it upside down. There we go. We have uh, the, the, uh, these figures in there. And a lot of folks do not understand the golden mean, but there is a prime example of the lower section and the upper section and the complete right section. It forms a triangle. Okay. Uh, and they represent that. Okay. Um, Majority of folks might be doing this stuff um, uh, unconsciously, but nonetheless, it is happening. Okay. Uh, so then they discuss about uh, the ground up. Okay, uh, building your diorama. Uh, rocks and boulders. Okay, uh, boulders are exposed, therefore they should not be sitting on top of your diorama, but rather. Uh, sunk into the the earth uh, vegetation everything is sporadic okay it's not symmetrical um, building dioramas materials used so on and so forth uh, here's an example of where they're talking about uh, 14 in uh, Andrea Cory Bannock's I deep in hell the groundwork tells the story more than the figure does, showing the horrors of World War I trench warfare. And I want to focus in on that. And this is an example of telling the story. This is an absolutely fantastic book. I've only perused. I haven't read it yet. I look at the pictures. Okay. Uh, as we see, uh, we've got a German grenadier. We're ready to toss his grenade and all that good stuff. He's in a trench, and we see the dead bodies. Uh uh, absolutely uh, wonderful rendition of that. Uh, you know, uh, the face depicts the urgency of uh, tossing that grenade and so on and so forth. So it tells a story, and that's what they're telling. The diorama is not just a matter of placing a vehicle um, on, the <clears throat> on something or whatever. It's uh, showing some realism. And a lot of thought goes into that. There's a hell of a lot more thought that goes into that. Um, uh, with regards to uh, just doing a diorama. Uh, if we look at uh, this particular depiction over here, they're talking about ocean wave to to topography. Okay, uh, average distance between the seas is 300 feet. Okay, uh, with following seas and so on and so forth, of anywhere from 4,800 feet. But a, a 300 foot destroyer should be fitting in the waves, between the waves. Uh, or so it has, you know, uh, average distance between waves is 300. So if you've got a 600 foot uh, destroyer, it's going to be, be uh, is going to be uh, sitting on two waves, and you have to depict that in your diorama. Okay, uh, various methods. Okay, of uh, uh, how they created this particular uh, submarine underwater. Okay, fantastic idea. Uh, the periscope and the bubbles from the missile launch, okay, are two brass rods, and of course, uh, the cotton represents the uh, the flume. Uh, weathering techniques, they go into that, the grease and grimes and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, it's stuff that we already know, but nonetheless, uh, it's there, and um, uh, posing and painting figures, okay, is a nice chapter. Uh, they have to be in realistics. Um, for example, here, uh, 
some guys are doing it is where they're using hot water and so on and so forth and uh, bending hands around objects, okay? Don't have an open hand around a pipe, but a closed hand and stuff like that. Uh, attention to detail. Um, uh, imbalance, high protection, okay? The various, uh, very, very uh, good book. Um, Uh, for example, the principle of scale distance, the closest you can focus on a figure is about 5 inches. Okay, at that distance, a 135 scale figure appears to the same size as a man standing 20 feet away. You need only indicate details visible to a, a real man at that distance. Uh, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting uh, observation there. And... Uh, I am starting to understand the 135th scale more and more. Cohen talks about it occasionally, and uh, now I understand it. Uh, and this one here, he did it a little gracefully and all that good stuff. Uh, this individual is uh, it's showing he's wounded, but it's not gory. Uh, the placement of this shoulder, he's a down, he's a down uh, soldier. He's been killed. It has to depict that he has been killed. And in this particular one, they say, if you include dead bodies on a scene, make sure they look dead, not just knocked over. Be sure to press them firmly into the groundwork. Note that this figure's head is thrown back and how his helmet tilts down over his eyes. Okay. Um, uh, don't overdo it. Okay, first aid station, they don't show a lot of blood, but they're showing that they're scrubbing off some blood here on the stretcher. Okay, very, very pale. Uh, here's an example of in your face. Um, so, uh, and they go into figure painting, uh, the elephant's dilemma. Uh, it's just a, a diorama step by step. Um, details and accessories, uh, various things can be used. Um, how to build uh, several things like. Uh, uh, work desks, uh, workbenches, and so on and so forth in your dioramas. Um, just excellent. The part that I uh, bookmarked here on mine, okay, because I will be building, uh, and they got s several um, uh, genres, okay, we got the maritime, they cover them all, okay, structures for dioramas, Okay, how about go, how to go about them? You're going to build your own structures. Of course, you're going to need a scale, a uh, scale rule, and so on and so forth. But um, there was one particular. Um, it's one of the panders with the short barrel, which was designed for uh, urban combat, therefore depicted in an urban scene. Uh, it's in this book, I believe. Uh, vehicles with large guns and so on and so forth. Uh, Anyways, um, but this one here is uh, the Hornet's Nest is all about a down tank and how to recreate uh, battle damage. They discuss on uh, how rounds hit, uh, so on and so forth, and what kind of damage we can expect, okay, right down to the type of ammunition used in the day, okay, where we see uh, the turret completely blown off. Uh, that is not about to freaking happen. It can go cockeyed. Uh, but some of that stuff uh, to think about when you're building your dioramas. Um, shadow boxes, uh, we get into that, uh, requires lighting and so on and so forth. So it covers all the different aspects of dioramas um, and how to go about it. Um, didn't pay much for this book. I think it was about $12, okay, it's used. Uh, but definitely worth uh, the price of admission as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, there's some uh, superfluous information in there that we already know. Uh, there's smallers out there that don't know. But what I'm trying to offer here to you, uh, folks, being a, a newbie into uh, some of this, is um, uh, offering uh, the newcomers or return members uh, to the modeling community uh, some of the the references I am using have had and have assisted me greatly uh, returning to the hobby. So uh, that's all I have for now. Uh, How to build dioramas by Shepard Payne, uh, a well worthy addition uh, to your uh, reference library for those folks that intend on building dioramas. 
Without further ado, Switcher, signing off. Thanks for watching.